Look, it's watermelon season. Yeah. Really, all kinds of great produce, um, you know, at the stands, on the shelves at the grocery store. So, how do you know what to pick to get? That's always just the question, especially with the top watermelon. Of the you yeah. Don't know. And Nina Malhoff is out at a spot for us today to get some advice about all this. Nina. Hey ladies and gentlemen, that's right. We are at Cherry Sprout Produce here on North Albina and near Alberta. And we are talking all things watermelon with Cherry Sprout Produce owner, Nick O'Neill. Thank you for joining us and having such a beautiful spread. They have amazing local produce here, you guys. Check them out um, if you come into the area. So Nick, we're talking about watermelons. Yeah. This is a great way to stay hydrated in Absolutely. the summer because I mean, it's easy for kids to eat. It's easy for kids to eat. Yeah, it's full of uh, water, uh, lycopene, other great uh, kind of nutrients and antioxidants. You said fiber too, so Absolutely, it's yeah, okay. it's great for you. Okay, so when you go to the grocery store and you see one of these huge guys, how do we pick a good one? How do we know? Well, there's a couple really good ways to uh, kind of to tell if you've got a good watermelon. Mm -hmm. The first is you wanna look for a dull, dark green color. The dullness actually means it's riper and has been on the vine a little longer. Okay. The second thing you're gonna look for is the kind of creamy yellow spot, the field spot. And, that, and that's that, where it's been sitting on the ground exactly. growing on the vine. Yeah, and the, the darker that is, the longer it's been on the vine and the more time it's had to develop the sugars inside so of I it. So I always thought one of these spots was bad, but you said this is good this because is, it's been left on there, it's getting sweeter and exactly, more delicious. Exactly, yeah. It's ripening on the vine. Yeah, it's ripening. great. Okay. And then um, the next and then thing... there's a sound. The sound, the sound is also key. Um, you want to tap the watermelon and hear kind of a higher pitched ping. Yeah. So that has a different sound than this one. Yeah, well, it's smaller, but yeah, you want something that sounds like a tight drum, like a like a bongo drum. Okay. Um, the weight is also important. You can lift a couple of them, um, and the, the heavier it is, the better. If you see one that's kind of heavy for its size, that's an indication that's that it's good. got a lot of dissolved sugars, and it's going to be really nice and sweet. Juicy and sweet. Absolutely. Okay. Before we get into how to cut a watermelon, let's talk about um, cantaloupes. These are Tuscan cantaloupes, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. These and look very different. What's a good way absolutely. and different than a watermelon? How do you pick these? Right, so um, similar, you're going to look at the color of this, but the opposite is the green mm -hmm. is going to mean it's not quite ripe. Um, so these darker green these lines, darker green lines are going to start turning yellow and a little lighter green as it ripens. And you're also going to go to, this is the stem side, you're going to go to the opposite and you want to feel for a little bit of give there. That's going to mean it's uh, getting sweeter and ready to eat. And then with these, um, smell. Okay. the smell, getting that nice cantaloupe sweet mm, smell okay. is going to be a good indication. Love it. Okay, I'm yeah. smarter already. Right. Okay, you have a cool way to cut this, yeah. especially if you have kids at home. You know, watermelon can kind of be cumbersome. <laughs> but this totally. is a great new way because well, show us how it makes Yeah, essentially um, really you flip it over and cut it into one inch strips across like that in both uh -huh. ways. And then you get these nice little easy to eat finger spears and there's less uh, peel to worry about and you can... Uh, yeah, you don't have to cut the rind exactly. off every time. People can just eat down to it. Uh, definitely. Okay. It's very nice. Nick, you have beautiful produce here. I mean, look at all these plums, peaches, all this stuff. Um, what is the best thing that we should be buying right now? Right now, there's so much great stuff in uh, coming from Hood River area, Washington. These fresh Washington peaches are incredible. They're mm -hmm. super ripe um, and delicious. Incredibly you were showing sweet. us cherries. Yeah, we've got too. Rainier cherries from Hood River, uh -huh. um, a bunch of different kinds of sweet red cherries like Lapins and Esquinas, which um, all have slightly different flavor profiles but are all really sweet and great right now. Um, we've got Bings over here right now. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. So you also have here at Cherry Spout Produce a lot of Oregon made and locally made products. We you do. have a commercial kitchen in the back mm -hmm. where folks, um, here's a sneak peek, I'll show you. Right. The Better Bar. This guy's name is Brody. Right. And he comes <laughs> in and he actually makes these in he your does. back kitchen. So we're going to be getting together a bunch of um, really local products that some of them you can only find here at Cherry Sprout. We're going to show you some of those coming up uh, in a couple minutes. Guys, back to you. Okay, I learned a ton. Yeah, the high-pitched thump of the watermelon. Did, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're gonna be playing watermelons at the produce stand. <laughs> that will be The odd. bongo sound. I feel like that's gonna be a live shot all on its, its own. That'll yeah, thumping be watermelon. Fine. Yep, okay. <laughs>